Not that long ago, Laura Loomer actually had her Twitter account banned, and the whole entire reason why she had it banned is because she was speaking out against a crime the doctor committed. There wasn't enough justice in this case, so she was mad. She's talking, she's explaining the news and what happened and being very informative. And because of that reason, she got kicked off. And I don't want to really go into the specifics on this case because I don't want to have my account be deleted just because YouTube is very sensitive these days. So Laura Loomer had enough and she took it to the real world. Basically what you're supposed to do if they just completely silence you online. I mean, what do you do at that point? What are you supposed to do if they literally have control of what you say online? It brings you to the point of no return, really. It brings you to the point of a time where you really just have to take it to the streets because what else are you going to do? Are you just going to stay silent? Are you going to deal with that? No. So, what Laura Loomer did was out of real bravery. She went to Twitter HQ and NYC and she handcuffed herself to the front door. So it was really funny too because I was watching the live stream and she had like a few guys that were with her. They're on the other side of the door and they're trying to block the door. This guy's from uh, Twitter, they're inside and they're trying to stop Laura right before she handcuffs herself. And then the other guys are just like, yeah, don't do this because you could end up hurting someone. So it was very interesting. They weren't able to do anything and she successfully ended up handcuffing herself to the door. And that's what they got. That's what people got when they start picking on people for their political viewpoints and for them just having a different viewpoint in America. I mean, seriously, what do we go on every single day? We go on what? Like, I don't use Facebook, but I know a lot of people still use Facebook. So there's Facebook, there's YouTube, Instagram. Instagram is really big. A lot of people are on Instagram. And there is like what Snapchat or something like just like a lot of really big type of uh, websites that are owned by big tech companies. So when you get kicked off of one of these companies and you're not able to go on ever again, it really makes it really hard for you to communicate. It makes it hard for you to communicate with your friends, maybe even your family and in a business type of uh, form. So this is really, really crucial. We need to look at this in a bigger way and start realizing that, you know, if this was us, if this was one of our family members, how would we feel? Before I go more into the story while I'm at this, while I'm talking about companies that are taking away your voice and don't really want you to actually be able to speak out in this world and have a say in anything, why don't you go on Minds? Why don't you go on Bitchy? Why don't you go on Gab, you know? Sites that actually believe in freedom of speech, that want you to be able to say whatever you want to do, to form whatever business that you want, to have the freedom to do what you want in our country, and maybe other countries throughout the globe that I'm not entirely sure of. If you're watching this from another country, then definitely get on those sites as well, because it really honors your freedom and you're able to say whatever you want. I don't know about other people, but personally, I just want people to be happy. I want everything to be safe in our country. And at the same time, I don't want things to be controlled. I want things to be reality, things to be set in stone. You just see things from the left, things from the right, different political viewpoints, and to put that together for your, yourself to think independently. I saw a little bit of hate for the incident that happened with Laura Loomer, but to be honest, I don't really understand where you're coming from. I mean, I totally think that you are free to be saying that, but my personal view is that Laura Loomer isn't doing this to be silly. She's not doing this for having a stunt. I mean, it's literally the last thing that you can do. So what is she supposed to do? Laura was number one trending on Twitter, and that's less than a week after being banned. So what did they end up doing? They ended up getting her a lot of attention. I mean, she definitely did that herself by going to Twitter HQ versus just kind of doing nothing. But what does that show? It shows that, hey, I mean, if they want to try to silence you, she's not even existed on the platform. She doesn't have an account. She's not even allowed to, I don't think, ever have an account ever again. And 
she is the most talked about for 24 hours. Most importantly, I think what Laura Loomer showed us yesterday is we don't actually need social media to have our voices be heard. Instead, if all things go wrong, unfortunately, if that route just goes by and you can't do anything because of it, you don't give up and you go to the public until your voice is heard. It's important to have our voices be heard while at the same time just realize that we are being silent. So there's a matter of time that you really are able to spread these messages. Big tech giants at the moment, they're honestly out to crush conservatives from properly debating. They would rather shut everyone up than have a debate so that they could just control what people are saying, what people are thinking. I mean, they wanna try to control that. So what they'll try to do by trying to control that is by having to believe just one type of political view and aspect to that. That's just plain wrong. Too bad censorship actually can't work in the real world. I mean, it's a nice idea online, like, oh, we're going to control what people say right behind this little keyboard. We're going to control the whole political view and what people are going to see. But no, that's not how it works because then you have the real world. You actually have something called uh, the butterfly effect. So you have things that happen online and there's like a result. It'll actually happen in the real world because life and uh, reality, yeah, that's still a thing. So people, they try to forget about that. Then you have incidents like what happened with Laura at Twitter HQ and then she goes number one trending on Twitter and people just can't stop talking about it. If freedom of speech dies in America, then this will be the death of free speech globally, and I feel like we're really going to have bigger problems with other countries. Stop trying to control what people say and what people think. This is only going to motivate the people that are being silenced to become much stronger. Adrenaline kicks in, fear is lost, and courage is built off of the destruction that pure evil has formed. Engrave this upon your heart. Right is right even when no one is doing it. Wrong is wrong even when everyone is doing it. Such a popular saying that the majority of you have actually probably seen without the course of your entire lifetime. But I really think that this is a powerful statement. With all things considered, we should really be aware of what's going on so that we could appreciate our freedoms and our values that we have to not lose anything that we've worked so hard for. Well, that's all I have for this video right now, but stay tuned and I'll catch you next time.